Hi everyone, it's Robert, ASFC Chemistry, and what I'm going to go through with you in the next video is the mechanism of electrophilic substitution. I know a lot of you are looking at benzene this year, and so you need to know the ins and outs, for instance, of nitration of benzene. You need to watch out for that electrophile, how we form it, and then how that interacts with the benzene ring. Don't forget, this is electrophilic substitution. Benzene doesn't readily undergo addition reactions. The addition, the electrophilic addition, is an AS topic, not A2, but if you're doing the full A level, then it will come up at the end of the second year still. Okay, so what's happening in electrophilic substitution? Now, first off, what I've already drawn out for you is the reaction to form the electrophile. There's more than one equation you can write for this, but I kind of like the one-step equation instead of a two-step, where you're reacting sulfuric acid with nitric acid. And in this reaction, really weirdly, nitric acid is actually reacting as a base because it accepts a proton from the H2SO4. Now, if you show a two-step process, what you notice is you form something called h 2 NO3 plus, which then uh, dissociates into NO2 plus and H2O. But if you do it all in one equation, it's a little bit easy to remember. The important thing from this is I've made this electrophile here, the NO2 plus, and I've positioned it just here next to my benzene ring, for instance. So I'm going to react these two together in the electrophilic substitution mechanism. Now, first thing is, because this is an electrophile, the electron source from here is going to reach out to it. And the electron source is this delocalized ring of electrons here on the benzene. Now, this delocalized ring of electrons is formed from the p orbitals overlapping to form a delocalized pi bond. Now, this is a source of high electron density. And so starting from the ring, not from the hexagon, we reach out to this nitrogen just here. This takes us immediately then to our next step, though. So in the next step, we have our benzene ring just here. There it is. And then over here, we've got the hydrogen now displayed. That was there originally, but we don't always show it. And then we've got the NO2 as well. Now I'm showing all the activity around this carbon and you'll notice now this carbon is bonded one, two, three, four times. That means it's no longer involved in the aromaticity of the benzene ring. And so now we have like a horseshoe shape or a C shape instead of the full circle we had before. Now the benzene ring wants to restore this aromaticity because it doesn't like having this positive charge for instance, which is just nestled in here. It doesn't like having that aromaticity broken and so it seeks to restore it by dragging in electrons. Now, we're not going to break the bond we've just formed here, because that would be silly. Instead, what we're going to do is drag electrons from here back into the middle, and that's going to restore the aromaticity and finish off our mechanism. So we demonstrate this with our final product down here, being the hexagon of carbons with the aromaticity restored. But now we have an NO2 here, and we kicked off an H+. So we kicked off our H+, plus. it's just been removed from the mechanism. And this H+, plus, although it seems like it wouldn't be important, and you don't have to show it in the brackets, it's just a habit I have, this H+, plus is going to be what restores the H2SO4 we used in making the electrophile. And that's because, remember, the H2SO4 is a catalyst, so it needs to be reformed. I hope this clears up any questions you have about the electrophilic substitution mechanism. If you have any specific questions, please leave us one in the comments, or you can send us a tweet, as always, to at ASFC underscore chemistry. Otherwise, happy revising.